Hi guys, Mike here with Century Security Systems Incorporated. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Maxia IVMS platform and more specifically how to install and configure the IVMS to get you up and running. This will also apply if you have an existing system with the IVMS software and you're just looking to update to the latest version. You can download the file from our FTP site. It'll always contain the latest version for you. So to get started, I'm just going to simply double click the installation folder on the desktop. If you get any sort of prompts or anything, just go ahead and click Run. Click Next. You're going to have to accept the license agreement. And in the Features selection, we're going to want to select the Storage Server and the Stream Media Server. Next, and then install. Once the installation is complete, go ahead and click next again, and finish. So you're now gonna have three new icons on your desktop that were not there before. First icon is the client. That's where you're gonna manage the, so the software as well as view cameras. The next two though are a little bit different, the storage server and the stream media server. So these are used for, in the storage server's case, recording. So if you want to be able to record your cameras, not just get a live view, you're going to need that storage server set up. The streaming media server, pretty self-explanatory, that's for streaming media. We will cover that one in a different video. The storage server, though, I'm going to cover in this video because that's the first thing that you want to do once you install it, is configure the storage server. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. Okay, now the first thing that we're getting up here is Windows Firewall has blocked the program and it's going to allow, ask us to allow access. So I'm going to click allow access, but I'm actually going to go one step further and I'm going to go in and disable the Windows Firewall. All right, so now, that's that, now that that's done, if we go back down here to the start menu, and we take a look, we'll see that we already have the storage server icon running down below now. If I take a look here, I can right click on that and I want to go to auto run. Okay, so we're going to check auto run and say OK. This is going to allow the storage server to run as soon as the computer starts up. The next thing we're going to do is right click again and go to local config and we're going to set a password. I'm just going to use admin for this case. Hit apply. And then I'm going to go into network and it's going to show you the IP address that it's using. The IP address is going to be the IP address of your local machine. So I'm going to go ahead and close back out of there. Once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and open up the IVMS 4200 client. So the first thing the program is going to ask us to do is create a new super user account. This is the account that's going to have access to administer everything on the system, create other user accounts, and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and make a user called Mike, and I'm going to set a password for that. And I'm going to go ahead and set it to automatically log in. Once we automatically log in, we may be getting some prompts here for wizards. I'm going to go ahead and close out of those. Not a big fan of using the built-in wizards. So I'm going to maximize the software here so you guys can see it nice. And what I'm going to do first is get that storage server set up so that we actually have the ability to record. Okay, that's the really the last part of the initial setup. So I'm going to go into device management and I'm going to click here to add a new device type. Once I've done that, I'm going to select storage server and press OK. All right, so now you'll notice on the left hand side, we have storage server added to our device type list. So if I click on storage server, you'll see that it's already found the one that we've configured earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and click add to client. OK, for nickname, I just usually use local storage. 
if you'll remember back, the username and password for this was admin admin. So this is not this, the username and password for the super user. This is the username and password that will be created for the storage server during the initial setup of that. You can make them the same if you want to. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click add. Once that's done, it'll now show up above here in our device management. And there's a couple more things that we need to do here in order to make sure that we can actually record. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go up here to remote configuration. And under here, we're going to go down to the storage tab. And under general, it's going to list the hard drives in the system. So you can see here, I've got an E drive. Um, it's unformatted. This will erase absolutely everything on the hard drive. So be very careful with doing this. You do need to have a dedicated hard drive. I recommend you go into your computer, take a look at the E drive. I can see it's empty. So close back out of there, click on it and say format. Alright, so it's going to say that the format succeeded. Would you like to continue? So we'll say OK. And we now have our storage server set up. That's only the, the, the start of it. Basically what we have now is the server running um, with the ability to record. We've now got to do things like add IP cameras, create recording schedules for them, and so on. We're going to cover all that in the next few videos for the IVMS platform. So make sure you hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see those.